Welcome back to the Beyond Good and Evil playthrough, ladies and gentlemen. Before we go and do anything else, I actually want to show you that alcove I mentioned a couple parts ago, where you can take a picture of that, uh, of that flying Dom's space worm thing that, um, that we fought when we got the hovercraft. Just in case you missed the opportunity to take a picture, you can just go straight over here, straight to the, uh, right of the exit of the, of the first dungeon. There are some crates over here with some... Uh, I'm just gonna call them refractors from now on because they're basically the same goddamn thing. Uh, Money crates with refractors and the skeleton over um over there is uh, what you need to take a picture of if you wanna um, if you wanna log that boss monster away. There is a second opportunity to um to fight that boss later on when we get the jump thrusters for the hovercraft, but um. But uh, if, if you miss both opportunities, you can always go back to that skeleton and take the picture of it there. Hey, whatever so, works. I do like how quickly the, the hoverboat seems to move. Like, it doesn't... It... Oh yeah, it's a very quick vehicle. Yeah. And you don't have to change the wind. <laughs> yeah, and it, it controls really well too, which is good because there are four racetracks for it. And... Um, Oh yeah, and there are these hovercraft races too. And um, yeah, I just hovered out there to let Paige finish talking because I hate video games that that try to integrate dialogue into the gameplay and then put it in such a bad place that it winds up getting cut off by something happening, <laughs> you know? Final Fantasy 13 kind of did that sometimes, but a lot of games do that. And then you just end up end up standing around, <laughs> waiting for the, the dialogue to finish. Where you have to stand around and wait for the dialogue to finish if you want to hear the whole thing at all. Because if you just keep going, you'll walk through some transition that cuts off the dialogue and starts a cutscene or something. Listen, pay close attention, because I'm about to tell you the secrets of the. I'm hungry. <laughs> Um, so can you do all of, uh, I'm just, uh, can you do all the races at once, or do you have to unlock more as you go through the game? Um, I'm not sure if you can do all the races at once, but I know that, um, at a certain plot point you have to actually enter a race to, uh, to access a secret passage into a military base that happens to connect to the racetrack. That seems like really bad place to put your your military base, where you normally would want that to be secret. Yeah, let's put that towards the the, the racetrack where people are going to be watching these goddamn things. <laughs> Not to yeah, mention, all well. the, the cheering is gonna really get kind of annoying when you're doing your top secret military research and all that junk. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! I'm trying to record a commentary. <laughs> uh, man, story of my life. Uh, the, yeah, I'm getting so many Diddy Kong racing flashbacks for this thing. This looks pretty yeah. easy, though. You're lapping a lot of people. <laughs> well, it's the first one. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's a really easy race, yeah. Do they get harder? Uh, gradually. But, uh, the, the um, the minigame type things you can do in this game aren't all that taxing. It's like, you do it, you get it done, none of that leaderboard crap. Your reward for, for winning these races is pearls, by the way, so... That's worth doing. You don't need all the pearls in the game to complete it, but you do need a significant number of pearls to finish the game. Oh. Because eventually, you're going to buy the spaceship engine at the back of the Mama Go Garage. They just have it sitting there for anybody who wants it? Yeah, spaceship engine sitting in the back of the Mama Go Garage. So I take it we go to space then? Yeah, you, you, we're going to get a, a spaceship, but but it's not going to have a working engine, so we need to buy the engine. All right, another race. Go! I like how it counts down in Spanish. Okay. <laughs> no, actually, I, it, it, this is much more Diddy Kong racing than Mario Kart. Hi, I'm Jade. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played much Diddy Kong Racing, actually. Uh, I th Neither have I. I think my, my my cousin had it, but I never had it it's, myself. It's good, it's just padded as hell. I figured CTR was enough, <laughs> yeah. seeing as they were inspired by Diddy Kong Racing. So. We'll get to uh, Diddy Kong Racing maybe sometime in the next 20 years. 
<laughs> Honestly, the look and feel of this game reminds me more of Jack Cross Combat Racing. Uh, I almost said Jack X, but I think it's actually pronounced Jack Cross. I, I, I <laughs> that that's really like you know I don't that, that's kind of a pet peeve of mine is pronouncing it like that because like uh, Project X Zone pronouncing it Project Cross Zone is just dumb. <laughs> Uh, well, even though that actually expresses the intent of the game a little bit better. Yeah, but it gets, it's a crossover. It just you know? sounds stupid. Like, uh, I know, you, you see the letter X and you're thinking, okay, well, it's the letter X. But it, it, it's actually it, a symbol. Well, you know, yeah. It's just, you know, um, like, uh, I actually, think in, you know, in Europe they're actually more used to just calling it a cross. Yeah. But, but here in America, when we think cross, we think crucifix <laughs> you and, know and you know what uh, to be fair lewis you are kind of right because i'm thinking like street fighter cross tech and it's an x you know and i, I say yeah. it like that but why not just use verses instead you know keep things simple here where we don't use any of them fancy fancy words here in miracle land <laughs> project crucifix zone will be a very different game <laughs> well sega son sega test on sure did sacrifice himself for the sega dreamcast so and he's in the second game yeah <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I know like this, this is not to do with what we're looking at, but they gave him his double explosion suplex, and I fucking love the game already <laughs> because of that. I still need to play those games. It's the little rookie. We already won a championship. We're not a rookie anymore. All right, and that's race two done. How many races? Right. Are there? Um, not actually sure. Yeah, like I said, it's <laughs> it's been a long time since I played, so my um my memory for the completionism of the game is um patchy at best. I think there might be four races, but I'm not sure. Oh, you get money for beating your own record? Yep, but you know it's not worth doing that just to grind money. You can get money so much faster doing other shit. <laughs> I'm guessing just beating monsters or taking pictures is probably the fastest way. Uh, how much money does the game generally give you? Like, will you ever be short on cash? An awful lot. Um, you might be short on cash to get all of the stuff in town at once the moment you get there, but um, by the end of the game, it's pretty easy to just go at a comfortable pace and still um, get everything in the shops by the end. Take a selfie with your dog while winning first place in a race. How much would you get? Six. Uh, <laughs> Six what? Six. <laughs> well, if you sell the picture both to the uh, scientists and to the newspaper, <laughs> I don't know, you could double dip. Yeah, you'd get 12. <laughs> anyway, you might see these big burly guys in gold armor that sort of look like alpha sections, except they're not alpha sections. They're actually just human soldiers. You can talk to those guys, but um, they don't have the same thing going for them that the, that the doms do that the alpha section do sorry look, look at that salesman he just looks like he gives no fucking fucks at all he looks like he's about to bust out in a rap song <laughs> yeah his head just needs to gyrate left no, and right he says he's an eagle he looks like he's about to bust out in a rap song about america but um yeah. sam the eagle anyway you can pay a paltry amount of uh of money to subscribe to these things and you'll get short it's little okay. emails in your um in your message thing that just you know give you very small updates okay. on what's going on now. in the world it doesn't happen all that often though so you have chosen to subscribe to the hillian word for the hillian that is yeah. so close to hylian <laughs> it is <laughs> oh my god i wonder if that was intentional it might have been, it, actually. I'd, I'd say so, because there. Are, I, I know that this game isn't trying to be Zelda, but they're a little bit trying to be Zelda, I guess. I think they're trying to to use what they can from that game in order to make people more familiar with it, even if it does play very differently. Including ripping a boss fight from Ocarina at a yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there are, there are some... Uh, around town, there are some doors with the shapes on them. You need specific key cards, which is basically the game's way of blocking you from getting more pearls through those doors um before the plot demands that you need them so there's not much in the way of non-linearity and pearl acquisition but anyway the akuta bar and i love this place it, it's it, the, the barkeep is a cow person and there are actually a couple mini games that you can play to pass some time here 
This guy looks like a commercial mascot. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I think this is a milk bar. <laughs> because there's milk in the background of the bar. I'll take chocolate, 2%. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, man, I think you've had enough. Jade, okay, Jade, it's not that bad. <laughs> and yeah, the cow person is a spe separate species. Pearl get. Gets us a pearl, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if these things are supposed to be black market currency, why are we getting it for the legitimate, like, nature photography work? <laughs> oh, no, it's just that the black market use, uh, accepts that it's, as its only currency. Probably because they don't trust whatever government controls the actual money. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Ain't no, no greenbacks. <laughs> so, you know, just envision the, the pearls as Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh, Bitcoin is a digital currency um, that's supposed to be you know, not tied to any one nation. It's supposed to be good anywhere. In in practice, it's the the uh, the only real value of Bitcoin is that they're so rare at this point that if you get a single Bitcoin, you can sell it for a ridiculous amount of dollars. Mm. It's 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 to be honest that it's dumb. <laughs> it, it I. <laughs> It was a neat oh. idea, but it just kind of didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> eh, yeah, it just sort of became people hounding bitcoins for the sake of selling them for actual money. But anyway, uh, this guy's wearing a pearl on his head, in case you missed that. Oh, cheat codes? Who a pearl on their fucking head? Is this uh, cheat codes or like a game code? This is a password that you're supposed to get in the game, and I forget what it is. I think I'm looking it up as I record. <laughs> um, were we already... Uh, were we already given it at this point in the game or um i think this is actually something that was from a promotion before um from like earlier on in the game's life cycle that you can't actually get in a legitimate fashion now any but uh, yeah that is the weirdest menu selection thing i've ever seen in my goddamn life Oh, yeah, I remember. There was a certain website with a minigame or something on it, and you could get the code from there. But I don't think the site is active anymore. Or if it was, um, I might actually have gotten it before this recording. But, um, but, if you, but if you get that code, you get a disc game. And it's basically a disc that you can put into the save points to play a minigame. Which I'll show off eventually. But first, let's play this and get the, uh, guy who's, and get the guy's pearl. And um, I think later on in the game, this guy actually gets a second pearl that you can play him for later. <laughs> you took and the first one away from me. You won't take this one. And we're 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 gonna play air hockey against them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently. Uh, you, you you can bet one hundred. You can bet one hundred credits to to just play for money. And, uh, you know, it's a nice relaxing way to grind for money if you're good at the game. Um, or you can bet 1,000 and, and, uh, and uh, get the pearl if you win. So how do you, how do you win? Uh, is it, do you have to get more uh, things? Get all, of, get all of the pucks onto the other side. Oh, okay. And the first one to have all the pucks on the other side is the winner. Okay. Yep. It's a surprisingly difficult game. Looks like it. It can be a bit finicky because before your arrow moves, it sort of jerks like um, an eighth of the way around. So your analog stick doesn't doesn't immediate <laughs> your analog stick doesn't immediately seem to have full range control like it should, but it actually does. It's just that first move kind of feels like the arrow is like breaking out of a rust. Um, no, I can, I'm just looking at this, and I can. I can just guess the moments where Lewis is fucking clenching his teeth. Uh, yeah. I lost the first time. Oh, you but, lost. But it's actually a two-round game, so I haven't actually lost yet. Uh, so it's uh, best two of three. Yeah, best two out of three. Uh, the, the little middle thing they have there, if a, it, 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 as soon as it's out of your square, is it counted as not being in your in your, in your your side of the, the field, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So okay, so you don't have to get them onto the other the other playing field. You just have to get them out of yours. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I do like how many Woo. different mini game that you know what that's actually another thing that kind of seems Zelda to me as well because Zelda games always have like a bajillion mini games for some reason. So. Um, well, it, it, you know, it's nice to be able to just go into a bar or a tavern or whatever and just play games with people. Yeah. I, I don't mind know, it as long as it's optional. And, you know, people get on Final Fantasy VIII's case for having the card game, 
as if that's such a stupid idea, but uh, you know, the best. It's not like RPGs you ever need to do it. The best RPGs out there have a, have a fuck lot of little mini games all over the place. Yeah, most of them, you know, again, you're some, you know, it just it depends on the mini games, but some some games have mini games that you end up playing for a really long time. Like it's not exactly an RPG, but a Super Paper Mario, I spend forever in the arcade in Super Paper Mario uh, playing the games in, in, in there. Um, uh, Spent a good time in the Gold Saucer in Final Fantasy VII. You and your your chocobo breeding. <laughs> no, I'm not even talking. Not even talking about fucking chocobos. I'm talking about you know the arcade. The, the arcade. Yeah. Although in um, in Final Fantasy VII's case, the Gold Saucer was also partly an excuse to let you replay the uh, mini games that you played during your adventures, like the yeah. motorcycle, the motorcycle, the submarine, the snowboard. Why does Cloud have to go snowboarding? <laughs> Uh, because in the snowy area, he has to get down a mountain. So he goes snowboarding. Uh, it's the only way. <laughs> nah, and, then they just, and then they just end up flying off the mountain and landing in the middle of a snowy, in a, a snowy wasteland anyway. Yeah, if you're playing the Steam version, everybody has a lemon face. Oh, oh wait. Um, so on the, the list of the, on like that little horizontal list, uh, does the game tell you where you can find all of the pearls in like the menu or something? No. Oh. No, it does not. Um, this guy's hand is covering a code, by the way. Is it box? No, it's actually uh, a password. But in order to see it, you have to go up here when he when you're not like close to him, so that he takes his hand off the table. But here's my here's my question, dude. Why did you write the code to your personal safe on the goddamn table? <laughs> so just so he doesn't forget it. Uh, anyway, I, oh, it's it's actually the uh, the key to his room. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> and then you ransack his stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is always the same code. But yeah, it's his, his uh, locker room. So, he bunch looks of like boosters. a bag anyway. <laughs> yeah, don't mind me. Pilfer. Yep. Hey, you got any nachos? No, you know, you could purple. open the goddamn locker. You don't have to <laughs> No, that will make too much sense. That's ah, exactly what they want me to it's do. It's ironic, Sorry, you see. <laughs> Rufus lost his booty trying to get some other booty. <laughs> okay. Also, you want to talk to this guy. Dude, that it's enough milk for you, man. It's time to call it a knife. <laughs> All right. And basically, what, what he gives you is a is a is a is a ticket that has another code on it for an alpha section locker somewhere in town. So you want to keep that, and um, when you can get into Fountain Square, you can use that code on one of the lockers to get something. And we're we're sort of, you know, trying to comfort a goat person who had his life ruined. I, I'm not sure if this should be tragic or funny. Uh, what's with the uh, creepy code saying that you can keep on telling all of these people? Oh, that's the password for the Iris Network, but um, you're not supposed to tell any of these other people. Uh, so what, if you say it, are people like, what the hell are you talking about? Sort of? Yeah. Yeah. yeah more or less. Okay. Lovely weather today. There are, I think there are a few people in town that you can say it to, and you'll find out that they're with the Iris Network, but they'll just sort of recognize you as one of them okay. uh no particular reason for doing it all right now I, I completely forgot to take a picture of of one of these guys while i was taking a picture of his, of, of the uh code that one of them had his hand over i probably should have snapped a photo of him then anyway we have ourselves another mini game yeah you get it his name's peepers because he's blind ah uh, yeah that's insensitive but, you know, this guy is badass. He can slap a table and somehow get these three buckets to just turn over. All right. Observe. Anyway, you can play this mini game for um, money, but when you give him the password, you have to play it anyway because he hides the um, he hides what you need to move on under one of the things. It's... There you go. Yeah, that it's a shell game. They're really easy. <laughs> yep. Well, in, in video games, they tend to be really easy. If you're doing them in real life, you, you have no chance of winning because they, they, they cheat. <laughs> yeah, that guy's most likely a street hustler. Uh, there was a guy running shell games at the in the light rail train uh, as we as we as we ran. Uh, I tried watching him to see if there was any sleight of hand, but I didn't catch him. 
Uh, no, but most likely they are. I ran into a street peddler. No, I mean like I, I, I tried watching him to see if if if, if 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 I could catch him cheating, and I didn't see him do anything. Well, they they've gotten good at it. If they're if they're doing it for money, they've gotten good <laughs> enough to not yeah, yeah to not get I caught. Know. But they're if you're again, it, it's kind of like a casino sort of thing. They're not gonna they wouldn't be doing it if they were gonna be losing money. <laughs> so yeah, 